the script in the scriptures it says that the, the bone of an animal is very impure when you touch a bone of an animal you should immediately take bath but this is a bone of an animal and we blow it and we use this in a puja and so it's a very contradictive situation but this is the Vedas they can contradict it themselves and they're always right whatever the Vedas say is right be accepted that was one of the examples Srila Prabhupada <laughs> The Prabhupada gave us another one was the stool of an animal is completely impure. But the stool stool of Gomata is used even for medicine. It is used for for house making. <coughs> It is used for cooking, so nothing impure about it. So can you imagine the apparent, who can think of other contradictions like that? The skin of the cow, when it's made into leather, it is played in the Medanga. So it's also so in the Vedas, there are such apparent contradictions that teach us that the Vedic knowledge is on a very high platform and we should respect the Vedic knowledge. That Vedic knowledge is, is really, it's for us crucial and essential. The Vedas are very extensive literature, so they are they are coming from from revelations, revelations given to saintly personalities such as Srila Vyasadeva. And in India, Prabhupada used to say that anybody who claims anything, they will ask him, where does it say what you say in the Vedas? If he then cannot show it, he cannot show it, then he he's not. He has a very weak stand. So, the Vedic knowledge is is of that unique way that it actually compounds itself into a collective <coughs> body of transcendental information, sustaining each other through quotations sustaining each other through quotations which can be counter-checked, verified uh, by helping each other to, to shed light on the existence of the being in this world. So today, this morning, after we had a little conscious blowing training. Now we want to know what is Vedic knowledge. Let's see. What areas of Vedic knowledge do you know and which book responds to it? I want to hear this from all of you. And actually, <coughs> this is written down somewhere, but it should be written in your memory. So let's let's do one by one. We go because we start this time counter clock because Guru Deva is here. So so you you tell me one book and what area of knowledge. Then one after the other. One Vedic book or, and what area of knowledge it covers. Yes, I start with one, Srimad Bhagavatam, it covers the area, the 
history of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now you. Not to worry about it, to worry about it. Huh? And to <coughs> Rajuna and to everyone? Yes. Okay, now. Well, this way, the Mahabharata also is an extended explanation of, of the Bhagavad Gita for everyone. <coughs> that we can understand some. Something that the other way is so difficult. <coughs> yes, to Mahabharata it can, can be said that it was given especially for the Kali Yuga, for the people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the, the Kali Yuga people of lesser intelligence, the Vedic knowledge has been put into very much story form and it forms also. The beautiful story of Bharata Varsha, the history of this of this culture where we are belonging to, the Vedic culture. Next, Maharaj. Manasamita, laws for humanity. Yes, very important. The Manusamita, it gives us the knowledge of how to behave and what are the rules in this world. Very important. The Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita give us the knowledge of the life and pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Why Chaitanya Charitamrita is Vedic knowledge? Can you explain that? was written 500 years ago, it doesn't come from Vyasadeva or? Yes. Well, because it speaks about Krishna in an authentic way. So, for some people it is not very, but we, as Gaudiya, Vaishnavas, accept this as very because also is always supported by so you were saying no, the, that the real, the, if you want to present something new, must be supported by getting knowledge. In the case of Chaitanya Bhagavad, uh, it is said that Vrindavita uh, Stakura is the incarnation of, of, of Sri Vyasa Deva. <coughs> say in the ten offenses do not offend scriptures of the Vedic knowledge or in accordance with the Vedic knowledge. So that sometimes there's further revelations like take Srimad Bhagavatam with the purpose of Prabhupada. That means uh, that not only the Vedic knowledge is there in the Bhagavatam but it's also there in Prabhupada's purpose. They are also Veda, so they are expanded Veda, and that's very important. That also explains why Vedic knowledge adapts itself to different time, places, and circumstances. Vedic knowledge is very, very uh, amazing. It is, it is has, you could say, flexibility that it can be explained to people under different circumstances and those different circumstances may add further commentaries to it but who are faithful to the inner meaning. Okay, then now Mohini. 
any Vedic book and area of knowledge. Upade Samrita is a book by Rupa Goswami. Yes, we would also consider it part of the Vedas, just like I said, like the, the essence of instructions, not the nectar of instructions. But it covers uh, an area of spiritual knowledge which is very, very interesting in Upanishamrita. Really, it's amazing. Okay, Madhusudan Maharaj. Ah? El Ramayana. El Igor. Ramayana. ¿Otro más? No, what, ¿qué es lo que cubre el Ramayana? Ah, el Ramayana es la, la, la instrucción para ser un buen rey, ¿no? Señor Rama vino a mostrar eso, un rey ideal. ¿no? Yes, and the history of the Supreme Personality of God in his appearance as Lord Rama, Vishparupa. The Vedas, but I don't know the book, but. Regarding the Ayurveda, Guru Maharaj? Yes, the Ayurveda has several books. Charaka Samhita is one. And, and there's many other texts also. So the texts of Ayurveda, Danvantari. Well, how many books you know, my dear Ayurveda? Yeah. nicely how it is money you can utilize this medicine how many of these books are available about Ayurveda? steel is available steel is available but is all the thing is Sanskrit so that's why it's very difficult to read and <clears throat> doing about that they're only in Sanskrit only in Sanskrit after that Many people uh, made is like English translate mm -hmm. and sloka after that meaning, but it's purely meaning is really very hard because they are they was very educated and Sanskrit was very strong like you no know, strong Sanskrit. So it's going on. Still is this culture is going on is Ayurveda nicely if you would like to take the treatment that, that for South India is the best place like a Kerala like a Andhra Pradesh. Like the um, uh, Tamil Nadu, other places are not that much in Ayurveda is good. Okay, now Bhagavad Gita Guru. Or Jase Maharaj. Any book Bhakti Vinod Thakur? Many books. Quoting a famous Seventh Goswami for his hundred books, literature, contribution to the Vedic knowledge. Okay. Kamal. Los Puranas. Los Puranas. How many Puranas are there? Six are for those in the mode of Tamaguna, six are for those in the mode of Rajaguna, and six are in the, for the people in the mode of Satraguna. And the Puranas, they are giving extensive description of Vedic knowledge and stories. It's full of stories. Okay, next. Who 
has any other area of knowledge of the Vedas in his books. I know you have not read all these books, but uh, <laughs> at least you should know that they exist. When Prabhupada wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita, he, he said, I don't imagine that anybody will really understand this, but I wrote it anyway because people should know that such things exist. He spoke about Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the Rasa Tattva of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> okay. <coughs> who, who next? Siddhanta? Sri <coughs> Ishopanishad. Om Pranamidam. This verse is very, for me, very difficult to understand, but Srila Prabhupada has very beautifully uh, translated this into English. Um, and made it very relevant uh, for devotees to see um, how the Lord is basically everything in its fullness and helps us see our relationship um, to the Supreme. Um, very good. So you caught, you're saying Sri Ishopanishad. <coughs> Actually, uh, you're making reference to the Upanishads yes. also. Yes because there's many. How many Upanishads are there? Three. One hundred and eight. No. Three, huh? Upanishads? One hundred and eight. No, one hundred eight. Oh, sorry. A little off. <laughs> <laughs> one hundred eight Upanishads, of, of which some are the more important ones. Let's see. Who can remember some important Upanishads? No, Brahma Vaivarta is Purana. Brahma Vaivarta Purana. And Brahma Vaivarta Purana is a famous is a famous Purana which has been interpolated. The Britishers and others have actually taken the script and disappeared the original and uh, made interpolations. Therefore, in the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, you find Jesus mentioned and Ma Mohammed, but these are very clearly interpolations. Bhavishya, Brahma Vaivarta Purana. Brahma Vaivarta is Purana also. Purana. Purana, okay. Then, so we have more Isho, more Upanishads, Taitiriya Upanishad, the uh, Kata Upanishad, hmm? Gita Upanishad. <laughs> Who can remember more Upanishads? Kena Upanishad. One is Isha Upanishad. Yes, we mentioned already. the area of Vedic knowledge? Jaya huh? Dharma. This is book ah. of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Yoga Sutras. <laughs> Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Yes. <laughs> this is another branch of Vedic knowledge. Hatha Yoga has been explained in Patanjali and in some Shiva Purana. Shiva Purana is also talking about uh, the, the yoga, the yoga process. You, another one? You? Okay, now the scholars can come up with what is missing. Brahma Samhita. 
<laughs> Rama Sangita, very nice, very nice. Special book found by uh, Lord Chaitanya in South India. That belongs to the Sanghitas. There's actually also many Sanghitas, and um, of which we probably don't know too much. Next. Itihasa. The Vedas, the original Vedas. What's the name of the original Vedas? Very interesting. What can you tell us about the four Vedas? That uh, it is not necessary to to learn about to study them. Veda is just a very no. Traiguna is a Veda, and it's Traiguna of our Nirvana in the South of Stone. The Vedas are. Uh, talking about the three modality of nature, so there's no need to study them. We are both all the all these Vedas. And the purple, the final purple of the Vedas is Krishna, but it's just a Virajana of the Dios. So if you know Krishna, you already know Veda. Also, when you study Lavam, I will Lavam and Novato. The Lama says it's very difficult to find Krishna <coughs> in the Vedas. But if you associate with the devotees very comfortably, very easily you will know about Krishna. <coughs> so there's no so, so much need. Also, it is said that to learn. One Veda, you need ten years. Ten years for each Veda with complete Brahmacharya. So to learn the four Vedas, you need 40 years in complete Brahmacharya. That's how I felt from authorities. Hmm. So, so that's, that goes as far as our Veda studies is concerned. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we have what more? What, what more scriptures are there? And areas of Vedic knowledge. Vedanta Sutra. Very important. The great, great philosophy of Vedanta Sutra, which has been explained by Srila Vyasadeva and the Srima Bhagavatam is considered the natural commentary on the Brahma Sutta. Other Acharyas have given other commentaries and who gave the Vaishnava commentary on Vedanta Sutra? Yes. What is it called? Govinda Vasya. So this is another very, very important aspect to understand all the Vedic uh, branches of knowledge. But let's see, there, is there more or we covered them? Itihasa? Itihasa is Bhagavishnu Mahabharata. That is Itihasa, for example. <laughs> the Vedangas. We don't know much about the Vedangas, do we? In Arta Shastra. Milita. Danul Ved. Arta sería economía. <coughs> Dan Urveda es el de la guerra. Niti Shasta de la política. So 
know, Arta Shastra. What about Jyotish? Where is explain, explanation to be found about Jyotish in the Vedas? What are the books about Jyotish? The Parasaramuni. Parasangora Shasta is Parasangora Shasta. Parasaramuni. Gedanda Sangita? I have not heard of this. It's a yoga text. Huh? Then yoga. Gedanda Sangita. Garga Sangita. Garga Muni. Any else? Anything else? Scholars? Any other memories? Well, we mentioned Shaitanya Sharitamrita and Shaitanya Bhagavata. <coughs> there is also Shaitanya Mangala. It's time to read Prapanna Jivanamrita. <laughs> <laughs> Who said the ba uh, Bhakti Vinota? Uh, Bhakti Pramod. Pramod Purimar said that. This is not true, but also the scary thing. His sister paid for the first thing. This shows how great Srila Srila Maj is. Any other further uh, Vedic knowledge and area of Vedic knowledge we should take in consideration? Vastu Shastra. Vastu Shastra, yes. Also, that is another area of the distribution of spaces. How the spaces are properly distributed. Pancha Tantra, Guru Deva, que bueno. No, aquí no se Pancha Tantra, aquí ya. Ya, 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 Hey, Shanti. So, what are the slogans? Shh. 
What are the shlokas uh, speaking about the Vedas from our scripture, like Trigunya, Vishayan, Veda, and this? Don't be attached to the flowery words of the Vedas. <coughs> so there's different 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 shlokas giving us some information about Vedas. It's a para Vasudeva para Veda, Vasudeva para para Yagya, para Tapa, Vasudeva para Agati. So there's one shloka in the Bhagavatam giving us reference, reference to the to that Matsudeva is understood through the Vedas. So the Vedas are the books of of Veda Vyas. And Veda Vyas gives us the understanding of how to approach the infinite Lord. So this is our our morning meditation on the Vedas. We have so many commentaries, there's so many books written. It is but then there is one instruction, Srila Prabhupada said, once, but actually it's right there from the six Goswamis, do not be eager to read too many books. And there's another instruction that there are certain books, they are prohibited. You're not supposed to read them because we are not mature enough for reading them. Gurudeva, what do you explain to us about prohibited books? What are they and why? <coughs> what are they? Hmm? What's well, their names? Gita Gori. Gita Gori is one of them. Uh huh. And, well, also some parts of the of the Shiman Bhagat and um, Chaitanya Charitamrita also. Siamara says that. We may read them only when we do complete lecture reading of the book, he says, but actually we don't have to read this part so much, Siamara says, also because we are more in the mood of Nipralamba than Samboga, so these books are more referring to Samboga, I think so. And in Samboga only the Manjaris stay there. So we, we don't have to go. No? Siamara said no where the angels no, fear to enter. Fools go. Fools go. <laughs> Fools rush in rush. where angels fear to tread. That is the, the, the famous statement. Yes. Fools rush in. So, so there, there, there are some books like Govinda Lilamrita, like what else? Ujvala Nilamani. So they have not been authorized for people to read. One time Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur asked Bhakti Vinod Thakur to publish one of these books. I think it was Ujwala Nilamani. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said no. Bhakti Vinod Thakur said no. Then he asked the second time, no. Then he asked the third time, no. <coughs> And after some while, he's, he asked a fourth time, fourth time, and he said, yes, you can publish one copy. <laughs> Very protected spiritual knowledge about the divine. Like Gurudev says, between Vipralamba and Sambhog, it is there. The, the difference is there that in the 
in the Sambog that is very high. The descriptions there are given for for these very, very advanced souls and they're not to be studied by those who are in the mood of separation because uh, that is a safer site. Okay, did we miss out any area of Vedic knowledge? Can you think about it? Anybody? So now it's your time for your questions. Any question? Any commentary on what we discussed this, mo this morning? <coughs> questions and commentaries. So many books. Are we supposed to read them? Do we have time to read them? Will we understand them? What a disciple should read is basically that those books which his guru gives to him. That is principle. Yes, what you say. I say is more people are like in West Bengal and all over India, I can see it's people are doing sadhana. And they are eating is all type of things, it's fish, meat, everything. They're doing shatanatham. What can they actually they they will go to back to garden back to home? Or you have to follow nicely then you can go to back to garden Well What did Prabhupada say about this? Prabhupada he said that the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they will be born as the monkeys and pigs in Vrindavan next lifetime, if they don't follow. And they are the Goswamis who speak others. And the Goswamis got very angry when they heard that. <laughs> they were very upset about Prabhupada's commentary. <laughs> What about their sadhana, their chanting holy name and like, you know, giving some austerity? We focus on our sadhana and do not think too much about other people's sadhana and we do not uh, compare ours with them because that will only co cause confusion. The sadhana is what your guru has given to you, and that is enough, plenty. You cannot know. The sadhana is in every temple is a little different. Every temple I visited. Another, another thing like in thousands of books, everyone saying this is Shastra, is not told, they mixing so many things and then making confused, then what can you say about this book? You will uh, you'll think this is Shastra or you will have to follow a particular book? Whether something is Veda or not is Veda has to be analyzed in the light of Guru Shastra Sadhu Vakya Chite De Koriya In that light it has to be analyzed then you can from that draw the conclusion whether it is or it is not. Hmm? It's difficult. Well, are you know very well the shadu, shadu and a lot of shadu and so many type of things that they're doing, they're saying, they're shadu. After that they are getting like, you know, they but are the shadu disturbing is the himself one and for you, the sadhu is the one who you respect as a sadhu. It's not anybody who says they are sadhus, but 
you have to find out who are your sadhus by uh, watching their lifestyle and and say, hearing their commentaries then you may come to some conclusion sadhu yes or sadhu no the other day we were hearing once one guy called Jagi Vasudev of Isha Foundation now he's very famous in India oh the big young and then the next thing he said, India is known for that there's no authority and there's no definition on the divine. He says, Indian culture is that there's no answers. Can you imagine? Probably read too much Osho. Most <laughs> 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 probably. He made big temple in Pune. Plenty of big temples have been made in India, and plen plenty of avatars have been exported. <laughs> you can find out in um, like what is it called in internet. His name is. Um, Ram Rahim. He was famous sadhu, and famous sadhu is not that that much spirituality, and doing so many things is you know outside is for the serving people, and his big area is like area is like two three kilometers, his, and his school, college, everything he put at Kosala, everything. Now is thousands of lush, thousands of dead body got is in underground. And then Krishna catches him. What? He's called Ram Rahim. Oh, this guy, yeah. Yeah, Ram Rahim. He's a famous <coughs> man who is like in uh, Koreana. Yeah, recently. Korea, near to this uh, Delhi. They found dead bodies in his land? Yeah, yeah, many, 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 many. He used to do this. People are very. Um, uh, justice not supporting him and just. Uh, there, he has a lot of bundas and taking and cutting and putting in underground like this. So many bad thing he does. So that's why now he's in jail. Twenty years government put it in. Twenty years only. Movie. <laughs> he he movie only. He made um, Bollywood, Hollywood, uh, Bollywood uh, movie also. <coughs> Big area. Thousands of people used to work every day. Behind him. Yeah, rockstar, rockstar. He's a rockstar guru. Rockstar guru. When police catch him and he's saying, it, I am God man, I am God man, no one can disturb, disturb me, no one can destroy me. People will do that and then And he was only known in India, nobody know him outside India. Oh, outside. Yeah, very up there, like, you know, one of the kids, he used to know some bhajan also. Uh, his name is, um, I forgot his name, he, is, he also is a uh, famous man, very good. And he used to give everyone diksha, if someone want uh, Lakshmi, and then giving Lakshmi's mantra, and chant this. And someone want uh, Shiva mantra, and he giving Shiva mantra. And someone Krishna mantra, he is giving Krishna So mantra. generous. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Asaramji Bapu. You can find out in Facebook, what is called in the internet. Asaramji Bapu. It's a big area he got and he's doing this his Raj. There. I don't know. After that is few years after maybe it's gone also inside people can got something like this. <laughs> so many things happening actually. 
even is gone inside is sometimes is people are very angry or something is don't like to, not interested then is authority catching and bringing is like near to the gosala one place is there that is called it is um, <coughs> it is called um, purana purana gurukul like old gurukul near there is very like what is called like forest area and no one going can go inside the everything and they putting like petrol and is burning so good yeah yeah even so many like is many people are already is left after that now is like this something is going on and cid also coming and finding where is that what is going on this Okay, we heard this. Go I don't take know. One day will come out. Yeah, the news. <laughs> we'll tell you something. Understand me. I am.